the Lord leads me to just have a chat with you today. Uh, this is something that's happening in the news right now. We've been talking about this on this channel for so long now. Uh, Donald Trump is saying that he's coming out with his peace deal very soon. He says now that before Christmas, now this is what he says, and we know his word is not worth a whole lot. But if he does do this, he's saying that before Christmas, he is going to come out with uh, the peace plan and present the peace plan to the Israelis and to the Palestinians and, and to the Sunni Arab nations. And uh, he's going to make it public. Thank you for all of you who send me comments. I've gotten many comments from many of you pointing out that it, he's been talking about this peace deal again quite a bit. And of course, at the UN speech, he mentioned it. He didn't uh, propose anything, but he did mention the peace deal. But what I want to talk about today is that as we've talked about this peace deal for a long time, many other people are talking about this peace deal too. I'm going to talk about uh, something I saw over the weekend. Uh, a video that was put out by one of these so-called Bible prophecy teachers who was interviewing another uh, one of these Bible prophecy teachers and uh, together uh, these are some of the things that they said that they, they said that uh, the Antichrist will come out of Europe they said uh, which is not true and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later here in this video they said that uh, world power is shifting to Europe, which it's not. Uh, world power is, is well in the hands of the United States of America, and that's where it continues to grow. Uh, they also say that God is blessing the United States because of Trump and his alliance with Israel. Uh, as far as saying that God is blessing the USA, uh, I wish they would go and talk to the people that just got flooded in South Carolina and North Carolina. I wish they would go and talk to the people still suffering in Houston, Texas from the hurricane that devastated them, the people in Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. territory, and what they're going through right now. The people uh, in the West that have been burned out of their homes and their homes have been burned down in uh, all the places in the West and uh, floods. God is judging America. God is dealing with America. Uh, things are happening. Now, I know there are good, godly, born-again people in, in Houston, Texas, and in, and in the places where these floods have come, and where these hurricanes have come, and, and uh, where these tornadoes sweep through, and the wildfires uh, sweep through. There are good, godly people. Thank God there are born-again Christians. And thank God the Lord is His, uh, He is a protector. He is a provider, and he is a caretaker over his people in the midst of it all. Uh, you know, he, he sees us through the trials and troubles. But anyway, what I want to talk about in this, in this uh, video here is dealing with this video that I saw over the weekend because they're talking about this final peace deal in the Middle East, and uh, it's incredible to me. I mean very very incredible to me that they make this statement now this particular quote I can agree with 100% but the astonishing thing is they don't put it in its proper context here's their quote when they sign this Middle East peace plan whether it's Trump's plan or somebody else's the Bible says that makes the beginning of the final seven years to Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus. Now, I agree with that statement, that when that peace plan is signed, it is the beginning of that final seven years leading up to Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus. I will agree with that. That's biblical. But the incredible thing is, they're not. They're saying that that when this Middle East peace plan is signed, whether it's Trump's plan or somebody else's, as if it's irrelevant whose plan it is. The Bible says that the person who makes this plan and puts this plan together, who, the man who who does this covenant, is the counterfeit Christ with this counterfeit covenant with Israel and many nations. It is a counterfeit covenant. 
of a counterfeit Christ, the Bible says, the, the ruler who will come, talking about the Antichrist who is coming, and saying that he makes this covenant with Israel and many nations, and he will break the covenant and put an end to the sacrifice and the offering in the temple. And he will, then you will see the abomination of desolation. He will go into the temple and proclaim himself to be God. So this is very significant whose covenant it is. But they act as if that's not important. And, and they act as if, if, even if it's Trump's covenant, so what? They are Trumpsters. I mean, they love him. They, throughout this video, they talk about Trump and how wonderful he is and what a great man and what a great leader he is for the United States. Now, here's, here's why you cannot trust the so-called Bible teachers of Bible prophecy. The reason you cannot trust them, here is why. Because these guys are a part of a constituency uh, of people, conservative Christians. And they're not going to say anything that will displease their constituency. They are part of it. They're part of this uh, uh, con confusion, this Babylonian confusion that is joined together, calling themselves co Christian conservatives. In other words, they're trying to marry together Christianity with a conservative philosophy, what the Bible calls vain philosophy. And those of you who follow me know I'm neither a liberal nor a conservative because they are both vain philosophies. Now, in this video, these guys, they speak against the liberals. They speak against the liberal philosophy, but they embrace the conservative philosophy. And they're going to try to please their constituency, their conservative constituency. Why? Because they're selling stuff to them. Uh, I'm not going to name these guys by name. Uh, instead, I'll just call them. Uh, I will I will just call them by a name that will will name both of them together. Uh, this this man who interviewed this other man, the this so-called Bible prophecy teacher who in, who interviewed this other Bible prophecy teacher. I won't mention them by name. So I'll just call them by uh, a name that fits both of them. We'll just call them uh, Begster. Begster, because uh, that's exactly what they are. Uh, it's, a, it's all about begging. They're begsters, and it's all about begging for money and trying to sell you books and trying to, you know, this, this little video I watched was about 30 minutes long, not quite 30 minutes long, and within that 30 minutes, this man who did the interviewing, he managed to get in three of his commercials selling, trying to sell you his book, uh, trying to make money. Do you think that, that he, who has this conservative constituency, trying to sell books, telling them, uh, being a begster, you know, send me money, send me money. Uh, when you go to his website, when you go anywhere uh, to his YouTube channel, first thing you'll see is, you know, uh, donate, help us, send us money, send us money, buy my books, buy my stuff. Begster, that's what they are. Do you think they're going to say anything prophetic from God? Because what if it offended you? What, did it, what if it offends some of their Christian conservative constituency? Do you think they're going to offend their con constituency that they're trying to get money from, that they're trying to sell books to? No. Uh, if God spoke to them, to their heart, and said, say something right and righteous uh, and true to me uh, about the immigrants, for example, uh, about the, the alien and the stranger, say something compassionate about uh, how people should care for these people. Do you think they would say that? No, they won't say anything that will offend their conservative Christian constituency. They're going to always try to please their constituency. They're not going to say anything, in other words, that goes against uh, their constituency from God. No matter what God says to them, they're going to keep their words in line with their constituency because they want to please their constituency because they want to sell you books. They want to sell books to their conservative 
Christian constituency. They're not going to be a, a prophetic voice from God. They're not going to listen to God and speak God's word. Uh, I don't call myself a prophet, but I pray and I listen to God. And when I, when I share with you, I share with you what I am convinced God has spoken to me about. And I can tell you this, sometimes it may step on your toes. Sometimes it may offend you. Sometimes you may not like it. I get all kinds of comments uh, every day from all kinds of directions. Believe me, I get it from, from people who call themselves liberals who hate me. Uh, because, you know, for instance, I just made a video about how the Republicans have managed to uh, maneuver things and keep uh, the uh, bill from passing that would have stopped uh, funding of Planned Parenthood. I am pro-life. I am all for defunding Planned Parenthood, which is the number one abortion provider in this country. That's going to offend the liberals. And on the other hand, I'm, I speak out many times against uh, this uh, conservative constituency, this, this, this cabal of uh, so-called people who call themselves Christians. They're really just conservatives. They're devoted to their conservatism, just like the liberals are devoted to their liberalism. And I speak out against liberals and conservatives. And I get it. I get it from everybody. Uh, because I don't have a constituency. I have, I speak God's word, and those of you that will listen will listen, and those who will not will not. If you have ears to hear, you'll hear it. If you don't, you won't. And so I'm not trying to please people. I'm, I'm on here to preach God's word to you, and, and it's going to fall where it will. It will fall sometimes on listening ears and sometimes on deaf ears, but it will fall where it will, and I'm, I'm going to preach God's word. I'm not going to try to please some constituency. I'm not going to try to give you words that will make uh, the conservatives happy so that they will buy my book. Uh, that's what these people are doing, uh, Begster and others of their ilk. That's what they're doing. They're, they're all about selling you things and getting your money. And so they will never be true to God because they're, they're living for their money and they want to please their constituency. And so that's why uh, I've told you many times, when you see that donate button front and center, when you see that, you know, send me money, buy my book, buy my stuff, when you see that, stay away from that because all that is is a bunch of hypocrisy, a bunch of money grubbing, trying to get your money. Uh, and so that's why I don't sell anything. I don't beg anybody for money. What I want you to do is obey God and do what God tells you to do. And uh, I've got nothing to sell and I'm not begging for anybody's money. I am just thankful to be God's servant. Uh, like the Apostle Paul, you know, said, you know, we don't do these things, you know, for money. We don't we don't minister for money or try to. Uh, get something out of you. I'm going to preach God's word. And the prophetic word of God, if you're true to the Lord and true to what the Bible says, uh, you're going to step on people's toes sometimes. And uh, they're not going to want to buy your book. And so uh, I'm not worried about people buying my book. I'm not selling any. So this, this team, Begster, they cite Daniel chapter 7 and verse 4. Uh, let's look at that Daniel chapter 7 and verse 4. And they say that this is talking about Great Britain and the United States of America. The first, talking about the four great beasts that came up from the sea that were different from one another. The first was like a lion. They're saying that is Great Britain. And had eagle's wings. They're saying that is the United States of America. And I beheld until the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Now, so they talk about this being uh, Great Britain and America and how they were once joined together, but then they were uh, broken apart and the United States stood up on its own. And I mean, it, they, you know, they're, but this is fantasy. This is not what the Bible is talking about at all here. And the key to understanding uh, Daniel chapter 7 is to look back 
at Daniel chapter 2 because in Daniel chapter 2 Daniel talks about the same four kingdoms as he's talking about in Daniel chapter 7 look in Daniel chapter 2 and we see that uh, Nebuchadnezzar has had his dream and he has seen the image and the image uh, is divided into four parts uh, we see that the uh, uh, Lord gave Daniel the interpretation of the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had and he said thou o king art a king of kings for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom power and strength and glory and wheresoever the children of men dwell the beasts of the field the fowls of the heaven hath he given to thine hand and has made you ruler over them all and you are this head of gold so Nebuchadnezzar had had a dream and seen an image and uh, it had a head of gold and uh, D Daniel explains to him you are that head of gold the first kingdom is Babylon and it is that head of gold and then it talks about the second kingdom inferior to the head of gold which was uh, the torso and it was of silver and uh, Daniel explains to the king that that's a kingdom that will come afterward and will be inferior to you silver as silver is inferior to gold that was Persia the Persian Empire defeated Babylon and rose to power and became the great power and then a third kingdom which was brass that was the Greek Empire which overcame the Persian Empire and uh, and then the fourth kingdom which was Rome uh, the mighty empire made of iron strong as iron uh, that uh, defeated the Greek Empire and so you have those four empires Babylon Persia Greek and Rome Greece the Grecian Empire and the Roman Empire and so those those are the four empires talked about in Daniel chapter 2 it's the same empires in Daniel chapter 7 God doesn't contradict himself in uh, Daniel chapter 7 is talking about the four great beasts that arise the first like a lion with eagles wings that is Babylon that's the first kingdom that as in the chapter 2 the head of gold Babylon this is talking about Babylon this describing the kingdom of Babylon uh, the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar uh, which was to be overthrown by the kingdom of Persia in later years from the time that Daniel is prophesying here and talking about these things Daniel is talking about the ancient kingdom of Babylon and describing that kingdom as the head of gold uh, and as the lion uh, with wings uh, uh, e with eagles wings that's talking about ancient Babylon and likewise when it talks then about the second kingdom Persia which is likened unto a bear uh, these these Bible teachers again they want to call that uh, Russia because Russia is identified with the bear uh, just because Russia is identified with the bear that doesn't mean this is talking about Russia the Persian Empire was also identified with this bear and also then it talks about the third kingdom like a leopard and uh, that was talking about Greek the Grecian Empire and so in the fourth kingdom the fourth beast uh, was which is identified in Daniel chapter 2 as as the kingdom of iron associated with iron uh, this is the Roman Empire so in the seventh chapter of Daniel it is called the this dreadful horrible beast the Roman Empire and the United States is the extension of that Empire in our day today the feet were made of iron and clay so it was a different uh, kingdom but it was an extension of the same kingdom it the legs of iron were the Roman Empire and the the feet of iron and clay that is today 
what we have in the resurrected Roman Empire, the renewed Roman Empire, the United States of America. So you may ask me, uh, well, but Brother James, don't you see that they said that the, uh, the wings of an eagle, because the eagle is represented of the United, with the United States of America, and in the book of Revelation, they talk about this in their little video uh, in Revelation chapter 12. Of course, it talks about how the, the woman, Israel, in chapter 12 of Revelation, the woman, Israel, is taken off uh, and delivered from Satan uh, on the wings of an eagle. Let's, let's look at that and read that, and I'm going to show you uh, how it is not the United States of America here that, that we're talking about. And this is very important that you understand this. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14. And the woman and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Now this woman is Israel. There's no question about that. You can read the chapter here and you can see it, how, how it harkens back to Joseph's dream. There's no argument here that this, this woman is Israel. We, we, I think everyone will agree with that. But the two wings of an eagle, to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished and delivered from the devil. The devil was going to try to devour uh, the man-child, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was born of Israel. Uh, it, we read that here in this chapter 12. And the woman was uh, given two wings of a great eagle to fly into the wilderness, uh, saying that that is the uh, United States of America. That is not true. That is not the case here. Uh, it is not it is not the United States of America. These Bible teachers are saying that this is the United States of America. Let me show you in Exodus chapter 19 and verse 4. Who are we talking about here that has delivered Israel? Is it the United States of America that has delivered Israel? Or is it somebody else? Who is the deliverer of Israel? Who is the savior of Israel? Is it the United States of America? You know, in, in Israel, in Jerusalem right now, they're calling Donald Trump every kind of savior. They're calling him the shield of Jerusalem. They're giving him all these honors and, and uh, titles. He is the Antichrist, brothers and sisters. Who is the savior of Israel? Is it the United States of America? I can hear some of you right now saying, of course not. It's Jesus Christ is the Savior of us all. If we would just believe in Him, it's God who is our Savior. Not the United States of America, not Donald Trump. It's God Almighty Himself who is our Savior, right? Uh, he, is, he is the one who carries us and saves us. He is the one who carries us on eagle's wings. He is the one who gives us uh, he says in, in Isaiah, you know, in chapter uh, 40, let me read that real quick first here. In uh, chapter 40, at the end of the chapter, you know, he says, <laughs> he says, uh, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Who, so the wing, we shall mount up with wings as eagles. Is that the United States of America saving us, or is it the Lord? It's the Lord, of course. It's talking about the Lord. So who are these wings that are delivering Israel? Is it the United States of America? Is it the eagle's wings? Is it the USA? Just because the USA is identified with the eagle. That doesn't mean that that is talking about the USA in the Bible. The Bible says, look in Exodus chapter 19 and verse 4. And God is talking to his people. He said to Moses, he said, you say to my people, 
Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. It's the Lord, it's the Lord who is the eagles' wings, who he gives us his deliverance. He is the eagle's wing. He is the one who bore us up on eagle's wings and saves us. He is the one who saved ancient Israel. And he is the one who saves Israel in the book of Revelation on eagle's wings. He gives them eagle's wings to, to fly away into the wilderness. This is the Lord. The Lord is our salvation. This is not talking about the USA. You know, this is idolatry, folks. To say that it is the USA that is going to rescue and save Israel, according to the Bible, brothers and sisters, don't fall for that nonsense. Don't you fall for that baloney. Uh, it is not the USA that is the savior of Israel. It's not the USA that's the savior of anybody. It's not Donald Trump who's the savior of anybody. But you see, that is the Antichrist. That is the Antichrist teaching that it will be salvation from this man, this antichrist, this false Christ, this false savior. That is the teaching of this world. That is what the conservative Christians are believing. And uh, I just urge you, liberal, conservative, throw all that away, all of that vain philosophy. You cannot give your heart to two masters. You cannot be given to Christ and Christianity, and at the same time be given over to this conservative philosophy, this vain philosophy. You cannot marry those two together. That's light and darkness. You cannot bring them together into one. They don't mix. The fellowship, there is no fellowship between light and darkness. So get rid of this conservative stuff. Get rid of this allegiance to this conservative philosophy and Donald Trump and the Republican Party. Brothers and sisters, this, this team in that made this video, which I'm calling Begster, uh, they, they said he's bringing everybody in line, talking about Donald Trump, bringing, him in, bringing everybody in line with what? They, they didn't say uh, bringing everybody in line with the Bible. They didn't say bringing everybody in line with God. Uh, they just said Donald Trump is bringing everybody in line. Bringing everybody in line with who? Donald Trump. He's bringing everybody in line. He's doing, he's trying to rule this world and bring everybody in line with himself. The Antichrist will not come out of Europe, brothers and sisters. That is a teaching that came from back in the days of the Reformation. Back in the days of the Reformation, it was... Uh, in their mind, the Pope was the Antichrist because they were the Reformers. They were the Protestants. That's what they were protesting. They were protesting Rome and they were protesting the uh, Vatican, the authority and power of the Roman Catholic Church over the people. And they were throwing that off. And so in their mind, the Pope was the Antichrist. And that's where this teaching has persisted all these years that the Antichrist will come out of Europe. But there's nothing in the Bible that says that the Antichrist will come out of Europe. There's nothing in the Bible that says that the Pope is the Antichrist. That's just a popular teaching, a historical teaching that, that comes from the Reformation times. But we're living in the end times now, and we can see things now that they could not see. I thank God for the reformers. I've made videos about them and I say, God bless them. They were Bible teachers and they did the right thing to come out of the Roman Catholic Church. And, and, the, and I do believe that the Pope, a future coming Pope will be the false prophet, but not the Antichrist. The Antichrist is a military leader, the commander in chief of the mightiest military in the world they will say, who can make war with the beast? He will be in charge of that mighty world empire, that mighty military that overcomes the world. That is a military in place right now. If you believe we're in the last days, 
if you believe that we're in the final days and I believe that everything points to the fact that we are in the final days now uh, everything is coming to uh, completion and a fulfillment and we're seeing Bible prophecies fulfilled all the time now in these last days we're seeing it happen and the mark of the beast the technology is in place now to get that started it has not started yet but it is starting very soon it's coming and we can see we're in these last days and so if you believe we're in these last days brothers and sisters there is already a military empire in place that encompasses the world and it's not Europe it's not Russia it's not China the conservative Christian constituency doesn't want to be told that it's America they don't want to believe that and so that's why these Bagster and, and company and all these people will never tell them the truth. That America is this final world empire that encompasses the world. The whole world is under the control of the American military that has over 800 foreign military bases. That's not counting military bases within United States territory. We're talking about foreign military bases, mil U.S. military bases on, on other countries' soil, on the soil of other countries. Over 800 spread out all around the world that surround China and surround Russia and surround Europe and fill Europe. Europe is filled with them. NATO is, is almost all the United States of America. Uh, they, this, these Bible teachers again talking about how Europe is going to build up a, and, and create a new military uh, power of their own. Uh, mm. How Macron is talking about a ten uh, nation uh, uh, conglomerate. Germany is occupied by the United States of America. We, the United States has military bases throughout Europe. And, and occupies Europe and occupies Germany and occupies these countries all over Europe. The United States of America dominates Europe and NATO. And, and so the, the, if you believe we're in the last days, you've got to wake up and smell the coffee. The United States is the dominant military power. It has the, the military now in place occupying Europe and surrounding China and surrounding Russia and surrounding nations all over the world. And so the United States of America is this final world empire. Like I say, the conservative Christians don't want to hear that. They don't want to believe that. They don't want to face that. But that's reality. Be ready to meet your maker, come what may. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. He's the Savior, not the USA. Uh, not any other power, not any political power, or not any political party, or no government. Uh, the U.S. is not going to save you. The Republican Party is not going to save you. Donald Trump's not going to save you. The Democrats are not going to save you. The liberals are not going to save you. Liberal philosophy and vain, is vain philosophy. Conservative philosophy is vain philosophy. Uh, none of these things are going to save you. Only Jesus saves. And I just urge you today to give your heart to Jesus, to come to Jesus. Jesus says, repent and believe the gospel. Just come to him and say, Lord, forgive me and save me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, Father, and I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to save me. I ask you to wash my sins away with the precious blood of Jesus. And I put all my faith and trust in Jesus. And I ask you now to cleanse me and forgive me and save me and be my God and be my Savior and lead me on through this world and into heaven, your eternal heaven, where we will spend eternity together forever and ever. In Jesus' name, be sure of your salvation. That's the most important thing. And, and then read your Bible and know, your, know the word of God. Know what God is saying. Read the Bible every day and pray and spend time with Him in fellowship and, and close communion. That's what He calls us to do. That's what we're all about in Jesus' name.